Hello and welcome to Build. I am Daniel Welsh and we are live from London. Today I am especially excited to be welcoming a band I absolutely love. They are joining us all the way from sunny Brisbane and having amassed more than 82 million streams on Spotify, they're going to be performing their track I Never Cried So Much In My Whole Life live for us. Before they do, let's get them on to chat. Please welcome Tim and Sam from Cub Sports. <laughs> Hello. So, well, hello and welcome to Build. How are you? Well, thank you. Good. Um, as ever, if you're watching live, remember you can tweet your questions to the band at Build Series LDN. That's at Build Series LDN. Or leave a comment under the video if you're currently watching on Facebook. So, hi and welcome to Build. Thanks. Um, it's been a pretty great year for you, to be honest, starting in January with the release of your album. You must have been, like, thrilled with the reaction to that. It was pretty amazing, yeah. <laughs> Um, how would you say that that album, as well, Cub Sport was the album, how would you say that that differed to the first two releases that you had? I feel like there's kind of been a journey sonically and personally that has continued through the three albums. So I wrote the first one before I'd come out as gay. I came out as gay in the middle of writing the second one. And so the third one was, I guess, the first album that I'd written like since I'd been out. Yeah. So it feels like the one that I had the most freedom with creating. So I feel like that, yeah, that feels like the, the big difference for that one. I suppose it's kind of like your most authentic one in that case, because it's the one where you're kind of being the most open. Yeah, for sure. Um, I read that um, in the lead up to its release, you were talking about how you felt a bit laid bare on this album because of some of the themes that you were talking about. Is that something that's kind of always come easily to you in your writing? Or is it something that's kind of come over time? I feel like it's something that has always kind of come through in my writing, whether I was ready to admit it or not. And so I feel like now that I'm out and I'm more comfortable with who I am, it's easier to, to write openly and to discuss it and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's kind of, it's always been a thing, even before I could actually speak about it. Do you feel like when you go back and listen to like maybe the first album that you go, oh, actually, that's kind of what I, I was trying to say that, but I couldn't quite get there when you, when you look back at it? Yeah, there are a lot of older songs that I go back and listen to and I'm like, oh, OK, that's what I was saying. And I actually I think I was being a bit more clear than I thought I was at the time as well. <laughs> For both of you, though, it must be great to know that you're, by being so kind of authentic and honest, that you're helping other people who listen to the music as well. Yeah, it's incredible. It's the best part. Um, we're just moments away from listening to your new single, I Never Cried So Much In My Life. So as the kids say, that title is a mood. But um, <laughs> it's not actually as kind of a sad a song as the title would suggest. Can you tell me a little bit about that song? Yeah, so <laughs> the... It's about crying happy tears, and it's kind of inspired by a couple of moments. The, the first one being just being at home, looking over at Sam and our two dogs, Missy and Evie, on the couch, and they were all just like smiling, looking so beautiful and happy. And I, can I just say as well, these dogs, I've seen them on Instagram. I can see why you would be crying at the sight of them. They are beautiful. They are ridiculous, I'm obsessed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I kind of just had a moment of reflection being like, wow, like, this is where we are from, I guess, not, not for years of denying the love that we had for each other and not letting ourselves live in that to then like having a home and having these two dogs that we call our daughters. I was just like, oh my goodness, like we're here, this is our lives. And I just couldn't stop crying. In like quite a short space of time as well, when you think like the first album was whenever it was, like it's actually been quite a fast journey in some ways. Yeah, once we- Making up for lost time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Took the leap and went hard and fast. <laughs> um, a lot of your songs, as you've just said, center around the two of you's relationship. Sam, is it ever weird for you when you're performing these songs live to be like, it's about me? <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely had some moments where I've had to sort of disconnect a little bit on stage to not uh, be too present in the emotion of it. Um, and sort of what we were talking about before, Tim's songwriting is it gave me a lot of indicators along the way that perhaps he did 
feel the same way about me that I was feeling about him. Um, so it's, yeah, it's pretty incredible having me be the subject matter of <laughs> a lot of Cub Sports songs. <laughs> I mean, you were friends for such a long time and obviously in the band together as well. Were there moments when you were listening to these songs and being like, maybe? <laughs> that is literally what gave me the confidence to finally tell Tim how I felt. Seriously. Mm -hmm. So what's your reaction now when, that, when you hear songs like I Never Quite So Much In My Life, when you hear that, are you like... It's incredible. It, yeah. Yeah, it makes my heart very full. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it feels for me, like, as a gay person, that it's kind of scary out there at the moment. It feels like things are starting to move backwards a little bit. Is it, does it feel good for you to kind of be putting out this music that's kind of a queer love story that kind of makes people feel good and feel hopeful amid all of the crap that's going on, essentially? Yeah, I, f I feel like it's more important than ever for people to be proud of who they are and to listen to their inner voice. Um, or, or I say rather quieten any voices that are sort of yelling self-doubt. Mm -hmm. Quash those and listen to the ones that are saying that, you know, I'm good, I'm okay. And pushing that sort of message out there in, the, in this time of darkness. Especially when there are already like so many external voices as well that are saying there are all plenty. of these things. Um, I feel like there's this real wave of like queer artists right now who are really kind of killing it, and it must feel really good to be a part of that. Um, why do you think that that wave is happening right now? And is there anyone that you're particularly inspired by right there at the moment? I feel like society is ready for there to be more queer artists. I think the younger generation are incredibly open-minded and have like kind hearts that's how i feel and yeah i think seeing artists like troy sivan and king princess and frank ocean that are yeah kind of just doing being themselves and doing things artistically that haven't been done before and that being praised for the art that it is rather than it being like here's a queer artist and it just being about them being queer, if yeah. that makes sense. But I think that's the thing as well. If you can present these other things, then it's like, oh, I can do this and I can do this as well as being just LGBTQ as well. Mm. Um, and you just mentioned as well, kind of your fans at your shows. And I've, I've been to a couple of your shows now. And when I go, it is you just look around and there's so many young people and everyone's just there to have a good time. That must be so amazing to look out at and see kind of reflected back at you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, it's almost too much to take in sometimes. It's a similar thing to what Sam was saying about almost having to like disconnect a little bit because sometimes if I look out and I see like young queer couples together and they're like young and they're so proud and they're like singing along and having a good time and I'm just like, oh yes, like this is, like this is what we're meant to be doing to like try and create these moments for these young queer people. And yeah, it's the best thing ever. This is like what you're trying to put out. Exactly. Yeah. Um, let's just talk about I Never Cried So Much in My Whole Life, because as I just said, the new album came out in January and we've already got new music. So does that mean that a fourth album is on the way? Yeah. That is very exciting. How, it is. How do you have time to write this? Because I feel like you're constantly on tour. Yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah, we are. I almost feel like writing is a necessity for me to like process my life and it's been such a jam-packed year with stuff constantly happening which has meant that there's been a lot of inspiration and kind of a lot of stuff that I have to like get out um yeah I, I feel like the right songs come at the right time so if inspiration's coming and the songs are coming then I, I feel like yeah just have to like keep keep rolling with it and so you spoke about kind of where we go from album one to album two to album three where are we at on the new album what how is that going to be different what stage of the journey will we be, will we be hearing well i guess it's very much what's been happening for me internally over the last year so like our first year of marriage releasing the self-titled record a lot of touring and i guess just like always a broadened perspective of life and everything so it kind of feels like a continuation of the same journey because that is what it is yeah yeah and 
I feel, I feel like there's a lot of love on the record, but it also is about embracing the duality of life that is the darkness and the light coexisting. And um, what about musically? What can you tell us about that? Sonically, it's quite different again. Ooh. I feel like every album we put out always will sound different to the one before. Well, you want to do something new, don't you? Like, you, you want to kind of keep things fresh. Yeah, and it's sort of a thing where I just record whatever is coming to me. It doesn't matter what it sounds like because when I'm writing, I'm never really thinking, what do I want the next album to sound like? I, I try not to put pressure on myself to be like, this is what we're going to be releasing or anything. It's kind of just writing for, I guess, the sake of following the inspiration or getting out whatever I'm feeling inside. So, yeah, it's... I feel like it, overall it feels um, light and... I would say it feels free to me. Yeah. I like that word. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what people want from a, from a new cover spot album as well. Um, you've got the UK tour coming up, which starts in a couple of days. Um, I know this is a cliche question, but you are here a lot. So I want to know, what is your favorite thing about being in the UK? I feel like we have an incredible fan base here. It's, it's sort of a universal thing with cover spot fans that they're just incredibly sweet lovely people but to be literally on the other side of the world from where we're from and have people coming to the shows and bringing such an incredible loving energy and singing along um i don't know it it's just incredible yeah seeing the fans and getting to share what we do with people so far from home is just amazing and for fans of yours who've not seen you before but are coming in the next week or so, what should they look forward to in a Cub Sports show? I think the energy. It's, I feel like it's something quite unique and it's, yeah, it's very special for us playing the shows. And I think the response that we get from the audience is really special as well. It's kind of hard to explain, but it feels like a room full of love, basically. Like whenever I've been, there's always kind of a weird stillness, but also like a real party atmosphere at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Respectful partying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very that. It's that, yeah. Um, next year, it will be 10 years since the Tim Nelson and the Cub Scouts EP, which is, I'm guessing, very strange for you. Will you be doing anything special to celebra celebrate or commemorate? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I... Yeah, I don't really, like, I, I feel like I was a baby when I did that and it doesn't, I don't feel connected to it in any way. And it f although it was, like, all of us still, like, together doing it, it doesn't actually feel like the start of Cub Sport in any way to uh -huh. me. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll push it further into the back of my mind. <laughs> okay, is that, is that not something you could ever see yourself revisit in? Just for, like, some fun. Maybe, like, for a laugh in, like, 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's not, you know, that's only 40 years to wait. So, you know, <laughs> fingers crossed. Uh, and in what ways do you feel like you've changed as a band since then? I mean, obviously, like, the obvious, but, like... As a band, how do you feel like you've changed? I feel like we've all obviously changed a lot as individuals and as a group. Like, we've grown up basically together. We were babies when we started as Tim Nelson and the Cub Scouts. Um, so I feel like we've grown. Um, we've learned a lot about who we are as people and the music we want to make and the mark we want to leave on the world. I feel like we're in a much more sure, certain place than we were when we started. Well, very excitingly, you're going to be performing I Never Cried So Much in My Whole Life in a couple of minutes, so you need to get ready. But um, while you guys prepare, we're going to have a little look at Faye off of Steps, talking to my HuffPost mate, Ash Percival, about standing up to cancer. What I like about Stand Up To Cancer, it's all about research. Yeah, cancer is never going to be our friend, it's our enemy. You know, find its strengths, find its weaknesses, and then kick it where it hurts. And there's going to be a couple of weeks starting on October the 14th, I believe, when we're going to do a big profile push uh, for uh, raising money. And there's going to be lots of great telly on soon, with lots of celebrities doing funny doing things. Doing silly things. But you can be at home and do your own things as well. Sponsored walks or sponsored a dog walk, that's always fun to do. Okay. You know, pamper 
the parties at home, get your nails done before you go out and add an, add an extra tenner in, clothes swaps, I mean, you can do anything. And before you, really you know can. it, you've raised so much money, right? Brilliant stuff there, and please do get involved if you can. But I'm very excited to say that joining us now, performing their new single, I Never Cried So Much In My Whole Life, it's the fantastic Cub Sport. <laughs> Stay. 